Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this informational webinar on Transcend, um, which will be exiting the pilot stage this coming school year. I'm John Mars with NCDPI, and I'm going to turn it over to Jeff with Pearson to tell us more about this new product. Thanks, John. Well, tonight I'm here to talk about Transcend. Transcend is Pearson's interim assessment um, that's computer adaptive for grades three through eight for reading and math. So before we get into uh, the Transcend interim assessment, we should talk about what an interim assessment is. Um, there's a lot of different uh, language vocabulary out there and sort of uh, mixes it all together. Um, typically, there's three different kinds of assessments. We talk about um, formative assessments, interim assessments, and summative assessments. Formative assessments are really a process, and that's an engagement between teacher and student where the teacher gives small granular pieces of information either before um, a lesson, after a lesson, or maybe during an extended lesson period. And to see, and a little checkup to see where students are um, in terms of understanding the information. So the formative process is really small um, in terms of granularity and more frequent. Now, when we move to interim assessments, um, we call them benchmarks. You probably heard benchmark assessments used before too. Those are used for educators as more of uh, stop points um, for longer periods of time. Typically after um, a few instructional sessions, maybe after a block of, of lesson plans, um, typically six to 10 weeks apart, and the granularity is a little bit larger. Still time for teachers to make instructional decisions and to inform um, the pathway of, of the students, but not as frequent as formative assessments. And finally, we have summative assessments, which are really the end point, right? They're just a generalized purpose of typically for evaluating an overall school year of what everything um, students have learned. So Transcend um, is really made up of three parts, and we'll go into each of these three parts, and then at the end here, we'll uh, demo it so you get sort of a live version of how it works. The first part is the Intelligent Blueprint. So Transcend, what is different about Transcend is that it is aligned to scope and sequence. And what that means is that when students are assessed on the interim assessment, they are purely assessed on uh, standards and instruction instruction that they've uh, learned already. So uh, students uh, can take the assessment, they will only see stuff that they've been instructed on, which is different than some other interim assessments. Um, the item banks, they're calibrated um, for a psychometrically uh, computer adaptive assessment, and we'll get into the item banks. And of course, we come with the reports, which are really important, particularly when we talk about um, interim assessment and usability. They are dynamic in nature, so there's a hierarchy to them. There's a district report, a school report, a class report, and uh, you can go in there and you can actually um, click on things, sort, function, um, and if you're at district level, you can go all the way down to a student level, and we'll get into that um, in a little bit as well. So first, we'll talk about the intelligent test blueprint. This is what it would look like. Um, if you had a blank um, blueprint, it would have all white bubbles. Um, if we look here in this example, we have math for grade three assessment one. Um, uh, the operations and algebraic domain thinking is a domain. So those gray um, rows are um, domains. Uh, the standards are the circles with the numbers in them associated with the domain. So when you're picking and selecting your scope and sequence, you just go to the bubble and you click on it. And then that turns it dark purple. So for this um, example in assessment one, we have operations and algebraic thinking. We have selected the first eight, one through eight standards. Um, for numbers and operations, for fractions, we've selected uh, standards one and two. And measurement data, we've selected five, six, seven, eight. Now, as we go to um, assessment two, we'll notice that for those uh, standards that were selected in interim one, they are now light purple. And that, um, you cannot change that. Um, they will automatically be appeared. And the reason why is because we have a cumulative framework design, which means, as we talked about, that students are only assessed on items and standards that they have been instructed on. And so as the student goes through the year, they, will, they could possibly be uh, measured multiple times on the different standards. 
um, that they were that they learned in interim one or interim two peri time period. Again, we have the dark purple buttons, and those are the new standards that the students have learned and been instructed on uh, the time between interim one and interim two. And as we move to uh, in the assessment three here, we see that, that it's all filled out. Interim uh, assessment three includes all the light purple of standards that have been selected in uh, assessment one and two. And then we have the dark purple that were new um, to students uh, between uh, assessment two and three. Now for uh, assessment two and assessment three, the focus will be on those dark purple um, standards that were selected since that is the new material. However, with the cumulative framework, um, the other standards uh, will be assessed as well. Now, when we talk about our uh, Transcend Interim Item Bank, it will be aligned to North Carolina state standards. Um, we do have a range of item types. One thing, since it is computer adaptive, um, all items are machine scorable. They're one point machine scorable items. However, I do want to make a distinction. Um, there's a difference between what we consider uh, machine scorable and multiple choice items, right? A multiple choice item is A, B, C, D. A machine scorable item still is one point, but it, we have a range of item types that include um, hotspots, um, matching, um, even in math, we have equation editor. So we provide different ways for students to show that they actually know the item besides just selecting um, one response of A, B, C, and D. Also, um, we have a uh, bias and sensitivity meet, uh, review that looks through all the items to make sure that they're uh, appropriate for the students. And the reading passages are largely passage based, which means that um, the students will read uh, one to two um, passages, perhaps three, um, and all the items will be associated to those passages. Now, I, I said the majority of them because in order for us and the system to calibrate to see, you know, what um, passage should should be selected. We do have a few what we consider independent items um, at the beginning of the assessment and in between um, passages. And what those items do is sort of calibrate. Um, so there'll be a short little sentence or two that the student will read and answer those questions. And how well they do that um, there will determine <coughs> the level of the reading passage. Um, and as we talk about all this together, um, really ensures that the items are intended to be efficient and focused on measuring the construct in different ways. So we've talked about this notion of adapted for each student. And when we talk about computer adaptive testing, what that means is that as a student progresses throughout the test, um, the items will adapt on how well they're performing. So if a student answers an item correct, the next um, item will be a little bit more difficult. If a student gets the item wrong, the next item will be a little bit easier. And so the intelligent blueprint really selects the right amount of standards and items um, to be um, <clears throat> to in order to support the claims. But also we have the efficiency of really collecting information at the student level. So with this model, not all students see the same items, and this will come into effect um, when we talk about reports in a little while. We did talk about uh, cumulative in nature. So essentially <clears throat> we do, um, you know, if a student in interim one um, doesn't perform as well in a couple standards, they may see those standards in interim two and three as well. One thing I, I do wanna state is that <clears throat> all students at the beginning of the year will pretty much start at the same spot, but then depending upon how they uh, perform, as some students may perform really well and some students may not perform as well, and so this interim two will pick up at where they stopped off after interim one. So it's really a progression throughout the year. Um, we it is a within grade level test, so um, you know all the standards the students will see are on grade level. Um, we don't vary, um, you know, from grade three to four, grade two um, to three. Um, they're all on grade level, and as we said, the item difficulty varies panel on students uh, response. One thing um, that I've touched upon that I just want to state here really is that students will have the opportunity and like I said, if they don't do well on, you know, some standards, um, you know, there is the opportunity for those students to see those standards again in interim two or three. 
the key here is though they won't see the same item. So, for example, if they're struggling on a basic math item and they get two plus four wrong um, on interim one, and that's a standard that they're struggling on, in interim two and three, they may be looking at the same concept, but they won't see that same item that says two plus four. They may get a three plus three or a four plus three or something similar to that. So once a student sees an item in response to it, they won't see that item for the rest of the year. So um, the point is that, you know, it's a cumulative framework. Students could be tested on the same standards, but they won't see the same items. Um, there's a bunch of tools and accommodations um, available for students. A lot of the tools and manipulatives are similar to what students see on summative assessments. Um, for accommodations, we have, um, you know, listed here, answer, answer masking, color contrast, um, line reader, uh, mag magnifier. So there's a bunch of um, accessibility and, and accommodations uh, for students that they've uh, probably been familiar with on their summative assessment. So when we get to reports, um, we have essentially four different reports. Really, the student report, right, show um, how students perform. We have a session roster report, so you can look at a, a bunch of students to see how well um, a, a classroom uh, performed. We have a class summary report, which gives like the average of how the class performed, and we have school and district reports. All these reports are dynamic in nature, so if you have a session. Uh, roster report, for example, you may have the math overall scale score and then each domain scale score. And if you want to see, okay, well, who, you know, out of these students, who are the higher performances on algebraic and operations thinking, you can click on that um, column and then it'll sort them by the highest scale score to the lowest or lowest to highest, whichever one you want. Um, you can look at overall math score and all the domains. The the real key here for the reports is that they're dynamic, as we talked about, and user friendly, right? We want them to be interpretable. We want them to be meaningful. We want um, teachers, educators to really understand and see and use them to inform instruction. Um, one of the keys, though, for that is that they have to be um, timely. And the reports for Transcend will be returned within 24 hours. So, for instance, if a student takes a test on Tuesday, the results will be available. On Wednesday, um, typically, sometimes I've seen it happen more than um, a few times where the students' reports are actually ready on Tuesday night, so they are timely. Now, when we talk about the reports and the interpretation of the reports, um, it is important to know that these reports will be updated um, during the testing window. So, it, you know, if, as you go through and you look at student performance, just keep in mind that the student performance you're seeing, you know, in day one of testing, um, it's going to change on day five of testing and day seven of testing because your student pop, your student populations are going to grow and more students are going to take tests. So it's really um, <clears throat> best, my advice is to really interpret, put meaning to those reports after the testing window is closed and you have the full picture of all students within the district and school and a classroom. Now, one thing um, that we <laughs> we um, look at at the interim report is we've talked about how um, it's a little uh, bigger granularity. Um, the time is a little bit wider than a formal classroom assessment. One thing that teachers and educators have really asked for is some way to get it below a domain level. We report. Um, those reports that we talked about at the district school classroom are all at the domain level. There's a, folks have asked, is there a way that you can get to the standard level? And so one of the problems um, that we encounter when we have a computer adaptive test is that not all students take the same items. So in terms of an item analysis report, which is typically what the request is from us, you know, a teacher wants to see, okay, on this item, how did my whole class um, respond and how did my class do on this item? With a computer adaptive test, you really don't have that option, right? So we um, went back and we developed what we consider uh, an item mapping report to provide a little more granularity at the student level on how they performed on Transcend. And so in this example here, here's the example of our item mapping report. We have the item number on the top there. And this shows you the sequencing of um, 
the item number that the student was exposed. So in the, when it says number 12, that means that was the 12th item on the assessment the student saw. Um, standard, that is the standard that the item is aligned to and measured. Correctness um, with means if the student got it right or wrong. So obviously a red uh, circle with an X in it, and in case the student got it wrong, a uh, green circle with a check mark means the student got it right. And then we have difficulty. Um, one thing I haven't discussed yet is that the transcend scale score is between 300 and 500. So here you see the item difficulty range. So we have the least difficult at 300, the most difficult at 500. And then you have this whole range. So you see how difficult that item was. And this is important when you're interpreting how well students do because difficulty matters, right? A student may see easy items and get them all right, but that you know is a little bit different than if a student uh, sees more difficult items and perhaps gets three out of the four correct. So at this report, you can sort by standard. If you wanna see, okay, well, show me all the, let's sort by um, the standard. So, you know, in this in this case, we have operations and algebraic thinking standard one, and they're all um, they're aligned. Um, there's a, a gray bar that's a little thicker that sort of separates the domains. You can also sort by item number. So you can say, okay, well, how did the student progress throughout? I want to see how they uh, did it from, you know, item one all the way to item uh, 20. Um, the item difficulty. Um, so you can see, okay, well, what are the items um, difficulty level and did the students get those right and what standards were associated with those items? So there's a little more um, complexity here and a little more information about how students performed um, on the um, transcend assessment. So at this time, I'm going to stop sharing and I think we're going to jump uh, right into um, a little demonstration by uh, Caleb. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So now that Jeff has given you all the information on Transcend, I'm going to show you what it looks like in practice. So I'll share my screen with you here. And once you've signed up for Transcend, you'll find um, a new assessment dashboard in your SchoolNet site, and it lives over here under Assessments and Transcend Dashboard. All right, so this is going to ask us to sort by subject, math or reading, and grade level. And that'll show us any existing assessments and allow us to create new assessments. So I can see I have assessments for grade four and grade five already in progress. So I'm going to create some grade three interim assessments. Click create assessment. And that brings us to the ITB that Jeff showed us in his presentation. So here, the, the district assessment coordinator or whoever at the district is going to create your assessments would sit down with your scope and sequence that says on the first interim, we're supposed to be testing these specific standards and you just click them for each domain. You click them, they turn purple to let you know they're selected. Um, if you want to see the actual standard nomenclature, you can click on this little information button and then each information button on the standard will show you that standard uh, actual language of the standard as well as the standard notation here. So the whole job here is just to simply select the standards that should be assessed on interim one. We'll click review blueprint and it'll show me only the selected standards. Just one last chance to verify. And then we'll click build blueprint. So in the background, it's creating that cat input file for the students to take on this first interim. The scheduling press process is very, very much like any other school net assessment that you've created and uh, want to schedule out. It actually has fewer options, so it's a little bit easier to go through and schedule out. So that screen should look pretty familiar to you. I'm not going to schedule this one right now. I'm going to go back to the assessment dashboard and we'll take a look at what it looks like now. So here we can see our third grade assessment one. And here are the standards that are included on it. So after the students complete this test and they do that the same way that they would take any school net test, um, once you give out the passcode to the students, they log in and take it. And we're now on to the second interim test window. So we'll click create assessment again. And this is where you see the previously tested standards selected in this lighter purple circle. I can't do anything about it. I can't reselect them. I can't deselect them. They're just there to let me know that those are eligible for retest on any subsequent interim. 
So what I'm supposed to do here on interim two is select the newly taught standards that should be assessed on interim two. And again, I'm just I'm kind of making things up as I go as far as the standards I select. So the dark purple circles are the newly selected standards and the lighter ones are previously assessed standards that are eligible for retest. We'll build that blueprint. All right. Now back on the assessment dashboard, you can see that instead of using dark purple and light purple, it uses bold font and regular font to let me know the bold fonts are the newly assessed standards and the lighter font are standards from previous assessments above. And since we're working with three interim assessments in Transcend, the last assessment, assessment three, should encompass all of the standards. Um, we're assessing students on everything throughout the year. So that's a pretty easy job to just click the remaining standards. Re blue, blueprint, build blueprint. And then we are finished with third grade math. So just in a matter of minutes, you can easily create a full year of interim assessments um, for, for your math and reading classes in third through eighth. All right, so assuming students have been in here and taking some of these assessments, the next logical step would be to look at reports. Um, so we would go to the reporting dashboard in SchoolNet, and you'll see there's a tab now called Transcend Reports. Keep in mind, I'm at the district level at the moment. So let's look at our math reports. All right, so at the district level, it's showing me by grades three through eight, what kind of data we have. So on our most recent assessment, I can see this particular graph that shows me the mean score for eighth grade math was 397. We have our standard deviation here to show us it goes between 372 and 422. Over on the right hand side, it'll show us the breakdown of how many students were in each of the performance levels. Um, if you want to see more information about the performance levels, again, that purple information button lets us see some more details about what's on the screen. So this will show us the legend for our performance levels on this particular graph. All right, so these are all drill down. So if I wanna look at third grade, I'll click third grade. And as a district person, it's gonna drill down into the various schools that have data that populate this district level data. So I can see that I have Abbott School and maybe a couple of students in this school here as well. If I wanna drill down into that school, I'll just click drill down and that's gonna take us to the school level. So this report looks a lot like the district level, it's just focusing on students at this particular school. So this is something a principal or a school leadership might see when they log into the reports. Since this is a um, elementary school, I'm only three, four, five. That means I'm not expecting to see sixth and seventh and eighth grade data here. I only had two students so far take grade five, so I won't see that um, the graph until at least four students have taken that. Uh, but I do have quite a few students in fourth and third grade that have taken tests. So the process here is the same. We're gonna drill down to the next level, which would be the class level. So if I had 10 teachers in third grade math that had delivered assessments to their students, I would see each 10 of those classes listed here. So if I wanna see more information about that class, I click details, and that's gonna take me to the status and growth summary report. So this shows me on the left, um, our, our graph for math overall. Again, our mean score here in the middle and our standard deviation of 354 to 454. And then it also shows me our performance levels here. So if we have uh, a lot of, you know, level five and level one, those are a little bit bigger. So I can see in the graph how much, uh, how many students are in each of those performance levels. At the top, it gives me the numerical data. So I can see the overall math scores and I can see the uh, individual domain scores and, and then the graphs for the domains over here on the right. If I have students who have completed multiple assessments, interim assessment one, interim assessment two, interim assessment three, I can click these plus signs where it says show more to see each of those assessments. So in this particular site, I only have assessment one, um, but I do have a screenshot to show you what it would look like if these students had uh, completed all three interims. It would stack them on top of each other. So when you click that plus or minus sign, it expands to show me assessment one, two, and three for that particular domain geometry in this case and then as well as the overall and the assessment on the left-hand side. Uh, the next uh, report would be at the student level. So I can see at the top 17 students were tested in this class. So when I click that, it's gonna take me to the status roster report. So these are all the individual students that were in this particular class. 
at this point, I can see names. I can put a name with their performance level. I can put a name with the overall subject score as well as the domain scores. And this is where you can start to sort. So if I wanted to see all of my performance levels together, if I wanted to see my ones in case I want to focus um, on those particular groups of students, or if I wanted to see scoring by domain, I can sort it in, in those various ways. The each of the performance levels has this black band that goes around it. And that, that's really a confidence band. That means the further around that black band goes, the more confident we are that student is that particular performance level or higher. So these students at the top must have gotten all of the questions correct. They're, they're the highest performance level. Their performance band is the highest as possible. Um, so they're doing really well. I can see down here we started to have some students that were missing a couple of questions. Um, still very strong, still strong fives. Uh, if I want to look at an individual student, I just click on the student name. And this will show us another familiar graph from the um, class roster report of a summary growth report. So I can see this graph for this particular student. I can see their overall subject score, their individual domain scores. And again, I can stack up their, um, their growth scores here to see assessment one, two, and three once they've completed multiple assessments. This is also where you would click to get that item mapping report. In my demo site, I don't have the, the data populated, but it's the exact same report that Jeff had showed us earlier, where we see each of these particular questions throughout the test, the associated standard, if they got it correct, and the item difficulty. That way you have a little more granular detail on each student and what they might have excelled at and what they might need a little more help with based on that assessment. So that is the reports and uh, the ITB in SchoolNet, what it would look like actually in action if you guys were to sign up. So I will go ahead and turn it back over to uh, either Jeff or, or John to take. Awesome. Thank you, Caleb. And I believe that concludes everything there is to know about Transcend. Um, as I mentioned, this is exiting the pilot stage next school year, um, and it will be available as part of the home base opt-in process um, and will be priced at $4 per ADM in grades three through eight. Um, Jeff or Caleb or anyone else, anything else to add? No, I think I'm good. Um, and just let us know if you have any uh, further questions and we'll be happy to uh, discuss with you. Absolutely. Thanks everyone. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.